In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use GIMP to create this image of puzzle pieces flying off an image. This is the image that we'll be starting with. It's 1280 pixels wide by 720 pixels high. Using an image with a black background will make it easy to produce a nice result. The first thing that we need to do is to add an alpha channel if it does not have one already. An alpha channel will allow us to make parts of the image transparent. To do this, right click on the layer and select Add Alpha Channel. Next we need to make a couple more copies of this image. So press the duplicate button two times and then turn off the bottom two layers. Now we're ready to make the puzzle pieces. So create a new layer using this button. Set the layer fill type to white and press OK. Move this new layer to the top if it's not there already. Then under the Filters menu, select Render, and then Pattern, and then Jigsaw. Here we need to make a few changes. The settings for the number of tiles will determine how large the puzzle pieces are. I'm going to set the horizontal value to 20. Since my image is wider than it is tall, I can use a smaller value for the vertical value, so I'll set this to 15. Down here for the bevel width, set this to 2. And we don't want to highlight, so slide this down to its minimum value. Then for the jigsaw style, select Curve, and then press OK. Here we have our puzzle pieces. The next thing that we are going to do is to remove all of the white background from this layer and only leave the outline of the puzzle pieces. So click on the Select by Color tool, and then click the white background. Then under the Edit menu, select Clear. Then remove the selection by going to the Select menu and select None. Now we can start selecting the puzzle pieces that we want to move. To do that, we are going to use the Fuzzy Select tool. Before using this tool, Come down to the Tool Options and make sure there is a check mark next to Select Transparent Areas. Now click in the center of a puzzle piece that you want to move. This selects the transparent area of this puzzle piece. Now press and hold the Shift key so that we can add more pieces to our selection, and then click in the center of another puzzle piece. Then repeat this and select all of the pieces that you want to move. When you're finished with the selection, turn off the top layer and select the image layer right below it. On this layer, we want to remove everything that is not selected. To do that, we must first invert the selection. So under the Select menu, click on Invert. Then under the Edit menu, select Clear. Now the only thing that should be left are the puzzle pieces that were previously selected. Now click on the Move tool and move these pieces to the right. Next, select the next layer down and also turn it on. On this layer, we want to remove our selected puzzle pieces. If you recall, we currently have everything outside of the puzzle pieces selected, so we need to invert the selection again. So under the Select menu, click on Invert. Now the puzzle pieces are selected. But in addition to selecting the puzzle pieces, we also want to select the thin outline that surrounds each puzzle piece. We can do that by growing the selection. So under the Select menu, click Grow. The puzzle outline is thin, so we only need to grow it by one pixel. Now to delete the puzzle pieces, go to the Edit menu and select Clear. We're done with this selection now, so from the Select menu, click on None. Now select the next layer up that has our puzzle pieces that we moved to the right, and then duplicate this layer using the Duplicate button. For now, turn off the visibility of the layer below our duplicate layer, and then make sure that the duplicate layer is selected. We are going to add a wind effect to this layer. So under the Filters menu, select Distorts, and then Wind. 
We want the wind effect to be applied on both the leading and trailing edges, so click on both. And let's increase the strength from its default value up to about 25, and then click OK. Now we're going to stretch out these puzzle pieces. So first zoom out on the image, and then click on the Rectangle Select tool. Now select a rectangle area around the puzzle pieces. This is the area that we are going to stretch. Next, click on the Perspective tool, and then click inside the selected area. Now grab this top corner and move it up and to the right. Then move this bottom corner down and to the right. Then click on the Transform button. After doing that, you will notice that a new floating layer was added. Anchor this layer by pressing the Anchor button. Next, turn off the visibility of this layer and then select the layer below it and turn it on. We're going to stretch this layer also. So click on the Rectangle Select tool and select a rectangle area around the puzzle pieces. Then click on the Perspective tool and then click inside the selected area. And then just as before, drag the corners to stretch the selection and then click the Transform button. And then anchor the new layer with the Anchor button. Now let's zoom back in on our image. So under the View menu, select Zoom and then Fit Image in Window. In addition to stretching this layer, we are also going to twist it. So to do this, Go to the Filters menu and select Distorts and then Eye Warp. Set the Deform Mode to Swirl CCW. Also set the Deform Radius and Deform Amount values to their maximum values. Now click one time in the middle of the puzzle pieces and then click OK. Now we can turn on the layer above our current layer. Here we've created the effect of puzzle pieces flying off of the image. Now we're going to put a black and white image under our color image. So select the bottom layer and turn on its visibility. Then under the Colors menu, select Desaturate. I'm going to desaturate based on luminosity. Let's also adjust the brightness and contrast of our black and white image. So under the Colors menu, select Brightness Contrast. I'm going to pull the brightness up to about 25 and the contrast up to about 15. Now we need to add a drop shadow to make the black and white image look like it's behind the color image. So select the layer right above the black and white layer and then under the Filters menu, select Light and Shadow and then Drop Shadow. I'm going to keep all of the default values, so I just need to click OK. As a final step, let's crop the image. So select the Crop tool, draw a rectangle around the area that you want to keep, and then click in the center of the selected area. And now you can zoom in on your image. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment.